Hey, it's Blossom, and I wanted to introduce you to somebody. Um, I went to Kalamazoo yesterday to this art fair, which is like an hour away in Michigan, and I found this artist who everything he created just kept making me cry. It just kept touching this place in me where I went, oh, the way he sees the world is so beautiful. And um, I wanted to share some of his work with you. I bought, I kept buying it. Um, it's apparently gonna cover the walls of my playhouse. So I actually just wanted to read you a few things um, in this video and see what it contributes to your world. So here's this first piece. See, they're very childlike and whimsical. And this one says, Cynthia, Cynthia frequently had a hard time explaining the things she saw and while she never really minded the fact that folks often found her quite strange for this, she was always a little concerned that they were missing out on a good bit of the magic that surrounded them. <laughs> There's her magical world. All right, this next one. Look at these dudes. This one says, and off they went, Freddie loosely holding the reins, making sure that the birds flew wherever they desired as Franklin dropped the good dreams down to those who were courageous enough to hope. Ah, this is so shaky. There's Franklin and Freddie. All right, this one, I love this. This says, but regardless of how disapprovingly the elders looked on, nothing could keep Penelope from dancing in the rain. <laughs> That's basically the story of my life. All right, this one says, they came from such very different worlds. They had seen such very different things. They were the very best of friends. There's the whale and the gnome. All right, this one says, <laughs> sorry, I just love these. Um, that's not magic, they would say. That's just the way the world is. And at that, Sherman would close his eyes, make a deep bow of the very most reverent kind and say, exactly. All right, this one says, oh, I love this. Okay, I have to show you this first. Look at that. And this was what Rodriguez was always waiting for, that moment when what he had been building came alive, reminding him that his work was never really his. He was only there to discover it. His task was not to create something of his own, but only to make a path for the creative restlessness that pulses through the world to build a door for whatever sleeping dragon was stirring behind that wall of white. Look at this painter discovering the dragon. All right, this one, ah, oh, I love this. Look at this. He's a muse, the conductor. And it says, it was a fine day indeed when Philip realized how well the orchestra of madness responds to a conductor who has learned to let go. All right, there's two more. I promise this won't go on forever. Oh, I love these. All right, so look at this guy. He's off and he's off and he's off. Sure, he looked back once or twice with the damn good reason. Most likely, Henderson figured, he'd be looking back at that place for the rest of his life. But long ago, he had learned that sometimes when you leave a place, it has nothing to do at all with the place you're leaving behind, but rather, whatever it is that's calling you out there beyond the hills. So when it came right down to it, the decision was a simple one. That certain kind of wind had picked up and it was time to go. And the very last one, <laughs> look at this. This one's very big. And it says, sometimes the blessing of this world became so much for Gerald that the only thing he could think to do was climb into a hot air balloon and go flo throw flowers into the mountains. And I guess this artist yesterday was really just a reminder that there are so many ways to see the world. You know, we either live in a dangerous and scary world to some, and then others live in this beautiful, magic-filled, possibility-filled world. And, and this artist really captured uh, what I know to be true, what, what touched and stirred me. And um, anyway, may it 
bring some possibilities and magic into your day to wonder about. So thanks for being here and I'll see you tomorrow.